BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere, Wednesday, June 8th. Wherever and however you're connected, always nice to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside a man as lovable as Mr. Rogers, as educational as Big Bird, and apparently as likable as Doc McStuffins. Who wrote this? He is Jerem Jordan. Time for your checkup. Time for your checkup. Uh, Yesterday, uh, Natalie Ibsen uh, tweeted the following. Forget Sesame Street, Mr. Rogers, Doc McStuffins. They'll all still have their moment. Right now, our Little Miss is most (laughs) invested in Big 12 Conference talk with Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. It's a picture of uh, her daughter watching the show, Mm -hmm. which, uh, let's be honest, this is the most educational thing you could possibly give your cougar-loving child, okay? (laughs) Um, They need to know what's going on. They need to know about the Blue Goggles. They need to not like Dennis Pittett. Like, these are important principles of cougar fandom that uh, exists. Mm-hmm. So congratulations to Natalie and the whole fam for doing it. Well, we think it's a good thing. Can we just say it's a good thing? I just did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we. <laughs> yeah. Who cares what anybody else thinks? <laughs> yeah. yeah, listen, a life principle you need to learn. You need to identify whose opinion you care about in your life and listen to them and don't listen to the other people. Don't well, listen to the haters. Natalie, I think you and your family, including your princess daughter, will enjoy today's show lineup as well. It features some royalty when it comes to assessing BYU quarterbacks in the NFL draft. Cam Meller from Pro Football Network on why he thinks Jaron Hall could be the next first-round draft pick at quarterback for BYU. Plus, Fred Warner doing his thing in pro racing behind the, the wheel of a car. What can't he do? And Heather Knighting of nationally renowned BYU Women's Volleyball. She's doing a lot of things for our country and for the BYU Women's Program. Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Alex Barcella worked out for the Utah Yaz yesterday. Barcella's worked out for five NBA teams so far, including the Spurs, Wizards, Kings. He's expected to work out for at least two more. So A.B. on the circuit. Best of luck to Alex Barcella. Track and field nationals begin today, 3.30 Eastern. Coverage begins at Hayward Field in Eugene, Oregon, streaming on ESPN. The men's events today, including the national number four, Kenneth Rooks in the steeplechase, number eight, Casey Klinger in the 10,000 meters and 5,000 meters. The BYU men's team's 12 bids, the second most nationally. The women's nine bids are seventh most. They have some real opportunities to score here and come home with some significant hardware. Let's go. Speaking of, Courtney Wayman is on the Bowerman watch list given to the nation's most outstanding track and field athletes in the nation. Wayman, one of three seniors on the 10-person list. Remember last year, Wayman set the all-dates collegiate record in the steeplechase with the 9:23:09 at the Olympic trials at Hayward Field, the, the uh, shrine to track yeah, yeah. Uh, that's in the United States and perhaps the world. Semi-finalists will be announced June 20th. How about some Cougs playing basketball in Europe, specifically Elijah Bryant? His team, Anadolu Efes, lost game one to Fenerbahce, 85-76 in the first of three scheduled games in that playoff series, championship series. Brian had 13 points, three rebounds, three steals in the game. They'll play again tomorrow, 1.30 Eastern. Good luck to Eli as his team looks to win the Turkish League on top of what they've already accomplished. Yeah, the uh, EuroLeague the Euroleague title, which title. is actually the bigger deal. Yeah. But uh, by the way, Mark Pope played for that same team, Anadolu Efes, in Turkey. Pretty cool. BYU men's basketball graduate assistant Brad Kitchen is a new assistant coach at Snow College with former Cougar director of basketball operations Andrew May, who was at Dixie previously, as the new head coach. So best of luck to Andrew and now Brad. Heather Olmstead as an assistant coach, helping the women's under-21 volleyball team beat Costa Rica three sets to none, a sweep in the Pan American Cup. The United States will play Canada tomorrow, 8 Eastern. Two finalists in the Cup will qualify for the 2023 FIVB World Championships. And Davide Gardini plays for Italy tonight in the Volleyball Nations League in Ottawa, Canada against France at 7.30 Eastern. This marks the first match in VNL for Gardini and the Italian. Davide doing his thing for his home country. It's good to have him on the court. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending. Uh, It's draft talk once again, Jerem Jordan, because BYU football is pacing for what we believe 
could be an historic draft in 2023. And it's not just us. It's multiple draft projections, including ESPN's Mel Kuyper, who I argue is probably the most prominent draft expert out there. There's not there with Todd McShay, right? McShay Those might two. have something to say about that. Those two because ESPN. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Four guys from BYU projected in Mel Kuyper's top 10 in their respective positions for the 2023 NFL draft, which brings us to a very early stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. BYU has had five players drafted three times in the modern draft era. By modern draft era, we mean since it moved to just seven rounds in 1994. Yes. In 1995, they had five. In 2002, BYU had five. In 2021, BYU had five. Now, what's interesting about this, Jerem, is Mm -hmm. the previous seasons for BYU football, the Cougars had at least 10 wins in all of those seasons. 10, 12, 10, to be exact. How about that? Mm -hmm. At least 10 wins leading into those drafts. So there's some correlation there. We'll talk to Cam Miller about that in a bit. But my question for you is, Will 2023 be a BYU football record when it comes to the number of draft picks they have in the modern draft era? Are they going to go six plus and set a new mark for BYU? 17 plus. Uh, They could. There's a chance that we think this team is awesome. Like, this team's going to be really good, especially on offense. Excited for the defense to improve. Let's see how much of an improvement that is. We expect the offense to continue what it's been doing the last couple of years. They don't have to be as good as the last two years. They just need to approximate that, right? Be top 25, be top, you know, 18 or whatever, and you're in business with uh, 10 possible wins here in the regular season and some really big wins at that. So, yes, uh, Jaron Hall, Blake Freeland, Clark Barrington, those feel like three guys who will be drafted after this year if they go. Now, um, you know, a, a couple of these guys, they can all return. They'd all have extra year of eligibility, I believe, Not sure on Clark. Maybe he has one more year. But these guys are going to have a great year, and they're going to bounce. And that's a great thing for BYU because that means you had a great year. That means you went to the NFL. This COVID extra year, not everyone needs to maximize that year of eligibility. Sorry to break it to you. There's a point of diminishing returns where you've been in college like five years. You're like, I'm good. I do like the idea of making a lot of money. That's the point of college. You mentioned right? those big three. Isaac Rex is the fourth in his respective top ten, according I'm to Mel Kiper. That. Yes, yeah. yes. So there are other guys in the mix who could be drafted. Isaac Rex needs to have a better year than he had last year. Obviously, he's coming off injury. But he's a guy who could be a draft pick at tight end. Big target. Huge freshman year. Not as big of a uh, sophomore year statistically. If he gets somewhere in the middle of that, like all you need to do is have like eight touchdowns and and 500 yards, and you're on the radar. Like, And then he has the physical tools as well. Puka Nakua, I believe, will have a 1,000-yard season and be a draft pick. Like, I think Puka's going to have a great year. He's got, he finally had an offseason where he wasn't hurt. Uh, Peyton Wilgar is a guy that if he runs a good 40, he could be drafted as well. And then there's a couple outliers, like D'Angelo Mandel, potentially out of the secondary. How good can Keenan Peely be? Granted, had the knee injury. That's always a little scary for some teams. But if he has a great year, he's got a shot. So I, I don't know that there's like seven, Spence. But I think there's a shot at having five. And that would be tremendous. I think BYU's got three. If BYU wins 10 plus, BYU's got three for sure. If not four, maybe five. This is another exciting situation. And you brought up the point of BYU's got to, probably got to have a good year to get on the radar. I, I think that that will change in the Big 12 where BYU is on the radar regardless. Listen, a team like UConn can have multiple draft picks. You don't always have to win. But it certainly helps when you're visible. Like David Nixon and Johnny Harleen and a couple of these guys, they get drafted if BYU is not on the mountain and they're on ESPN. I really believe that. The exposure of BYU's current contract and the future exposure of the Power 5 will certainly help BYU. And BYU is on the map with NFL guys. A lot of that happened when you win with the COVID year and Zach Wilson's too. So Dax Milne's getting seen. Brady Christensen's getting seen at a higher level. Those guys were awesome, but they also took advantage of the we're winning and being noticed thing. I think BYU does that again this year. Yeah, I mean, we could probably go 11 or 12 deep in terms of like guys that are hoping to have NFL careers. I think they're all hoping. Right? That's... The point is BYU is loaded with talent, and we expect that to translate into at least nine regular season wins. At least. Maybe ten. Maybe and then we'll see what happens if and when BYU gets into a bowl game, depending on which bowl game that is, if they can take that even a little bit higher. 
I think that BYU will have five draft picks. I think they will equal what has happened in 1995, 2002, and 2021. Who's the fifth? It's probably Peyton Wilgar. Mm, yeah. Let's go, Peyton. Oh, highlight of Peyton. Timely. Yeah, I, I feel like because Peyton was not healthy and because Keenan Peely was injured, he was asked to play out of position and injured last year, and it just kind of took a toll. And he was never healthy for the majority of the season. So with Keenan Peely back, Peyton gets to float back to his natural position with health, coming off surgery, time to prepare. He's going to be the Peyton Wilgar that we saw in 2020. I, I just fully, I fully anticipate that will happen. Um, Mason Wake is another guy that NFL scouts like fullback position. I don't know how much the fullback is valued in the NFL at this point. They don't need to draft a fullback probably. But if you are a yeah. pass catching option that can also block and you can be put into a slot position, you ha- maybe. You have to be those things to even have a shot at making a roster. Yeah. Sure. Malik Moore is a yeah. name that we need to mention as well. He's yeah. got some work to do and some things to prove, but he's getting on some radars. It started with the wing stop deal. Once he got that, <laughs> Then he had a shot at the NFL. Before that, no shot. Yeah. I, so, I mean, we've mentioned 12 different names on this BYU football team. There are probably seven or eight of those that have a really good shot of getting drafted, depending on what happens in the approaching season. Who's the Chris Wilcox, where it's like kind of off the board? Maybe that's like, D'Angelo Whoa. Mandel. Maybe it is, yes. Where And, and maybe it's Malik, where, oh, you, re- you had an incredible pro day. Your film was good. And maybe sneak into day three somewhere in the six or seven. Gunnar Romney is a guy that feels like he can sure. do exactly what Dax Milne did. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, if, if Zach, I believe Dax would be in the NFL as an undrafted free agent too. But the fact that he gets drafted late, I think it helped obviously a ton that Zach was the number two pick in the whole draft. So you go, who's your number one guy? Is he good enough? And it was like, yeah, Dax's hands and his route running are uh, incredible. So, yes, he's in the league. I hope that happens with a Jaron Hall and Blake Freeland kind of wave where it's like, well, who else is there on that offensive line? Campbell Barrington, boom, sneaks into the fourth round or whatever. And in a year, like maybe Harris LeChant starts, and he's awesome too. Kingsley Suamataia hopefully is here for a year or two, and boom, he's a guy that hopefully we're talking about as a day one or two pick. And then uh, you got a couple other guys who could be really good. Who knows? Campbell Barrington, Keanu Saliapaga, and others from this loaded offensive line. Like, what if, and what if Christopher Brooks, Spence, has like a 1,400 yard year? And he's got an NFL body. Touchdowns. Like, what if he's a guy that goes fifth round like Tyler Algier at some point? Because it's not always about your stats, right? The NFL doesn't care about the stats as much as they care about the intangibles. Potential. Yes. Like, why was Ziggy the fifth pick? He had four and a half sacks. It's not a huge number. It was drafted because of the freaking nature. Yes, primarily like, on potential because of what he'd done in the limited reps he had. Yes. So it's not always about the stats, but the stats help. Like, Tyler Algier had an incredible uh, year, fifth round, right? There were other guys who had worse stats who went higher. So let's – It. I just love that we're in this situation, Spence. Like – We've had a few years where we're going to the football season. We're just hoping they win eight or whatever. We feel like this team can win 10, if not more, and that we're talking about at least three draft picks, if not five, like plus. Yeah. This is a special offseason. I dare say the most hyped team in BYU history since going into 09. Wow. Because of the talent coming back, because of of what they did the previous year, because of the development we trust from the coaching staff. And, again, the real MVP of this whole friggin' thing, is Aaron Roderick. Aaron Roderick and this staff are developing the offense in a way that reminds us of the 80s with BYU's quarterbacks, of those offensive lines that BYU had, of the skill positions where you plug and play a running back that has real success. Now, and now, by the way, this receiving uh, core is, is extremely talented. In the past, BYU could get away with sort of the Four seven speed six two white guy that isn't jumping out of the you know what I mean now BYU's got and they were really good receivers I'm not saying they weren't good receivers I'm just saying like at pro day they're not popping as much right Andy Boyce was having like 1300 yards receiving that was awesome Eric Drage that was all those guys it was awesome now you've got a Puka Nakua who physically is just off the charts Gunnar Romney tremendous receiver Keanu Hill awesome Chase Roberts coming off a mission has had a year great Cody Epps can he be a guy that Bryce Young threw to for 1800 yards the the O-line feels like a traditional BYU O-line from the this is a very exciting time for Cougar football let's go man yeah and I fully expect it to result in and I'll go on record again 
Five draft picks. Like, if it's more, fantastic. <laughs> if it's more, let's, <laughs> I, I, take, I take four right now. Like, if you, I take three right now. Probably. I feel like BYU will equal the three times previously that they have put five into the draft. And also, I had this random thought as we were discussing the numbers. It's not be- random. It's inspired. Before the modern draft era, when it did go into, like, 11 rounds, yeah. Ty Detmer was drafted after the seventh round. Mm-hmm. Ty Detmer, Wouldn't the Heisman Trophy winner, and he finished third in the Heisman voting his third his senior year. Okay, he would have been undrafted in the modern era. It's because he's five ten. He was five ten one ninety or whatever, like five eleven one ninety. It's physical tools. Yeah, but like the dude started in the NFL. The dude overcame the <laughs> perception of those uh, lack of physical yeah. tools. Yeah, so he he goes down as a draft pick, but in the modern era, not in the modern era, like not in the seven round draft that sure. we're talking about. That's pretty crazy. It's tougher, obviously, to get drafted now. There are fewer a- a- rounds. NBA, same thing. It's only two rounds. It's only two rounds. Used to be several. And, and like, if you're a white American player, th- there's like a handful of those dudes. You know what I mean? Like, it's better to be Lithuanian in the NBA draft than it is American. <laughs> it is. It's good to be Luka Doncic. <laughs> not Lithuanian, but yes. I know. Yes, I'm not saying yes. he is Lithuanian. Yes. I'm saying like that, that mold. Like, if you're the European circuit. You have a better shot than uh, Yoli Childs. You know what I mean? (laughs) Our question of the day. What do you think? What's more likely? BYU produces five or more NFL draft picks in 2023, or the Cougars have 10-plus wins in 2022 as a team? That's interesting because it feels like they're tied together somewhat. What's more likely? Yeah. Yeah. Let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation. On BYU Sports Nation. At CL underscore living on Twitter answers. They go together for sure, but draft picks are probably more likely because the talent is there. Mm -hmm. Wins, losses sometimes depend on the fickle bounce of a non-spherical ball. Yes. No, it's totally true. Do you believe BYU can still get five if they win fewer than ten total, including the bowl game? Yes. If they go nine and four, the talent is there. Because BYU has – here's another thing, a benefit of sort of BYU's schedule this year too. And they have the talent to match this schedule, which is exciting, is BYU has showcase games. Baylor, Oregon, Notre Dame, Arkansas. That film is going to be reviewed a million times by scouts and GMs over the offseason where it's BYU's playing against some of the big boys. And BYU is one of the big boys in this situation, which would be awesome. There are people who are watching, yeah, Oregon film who are going to see Blake Freeland and be like, who's that guy? That's a first round sure. talent or whatever. It's going to sure. be awesome. Yeah. And those, those are the big four. And then just behind those, Boise State and Stanford. I mean, half of BYU's schedule, really, really challenging. South Point validated that with all these games of the year. And it was like, look at that, man, including Utah Tech. Just kidding. Coming on BYU TV. Coming up, is Jaron Hall more efficient than Zach Wilson with his summertime? Uh, Cam Meller, who has been high on Zach and Jaron Hall, joins us. As he looks at what potentially could be an historic NFL draft, is he buying five or more draft picks and 10 or more wins for the Cougars? Stay with us on BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Bodyguards. Protection for a life worth living. Quick crack. Wash all you want. Don't drive dirty. My name is Spencer Finnegan. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. During my sophomore year, I got married to my sweetheart, Mary. And there's tons of unexpected expenses when it comes to marriage. We were looking for scholarships. I found the replenishment grant. And my local alumni chapter gave me a grant to help me focus in on school. I'm so excited to now that I've graduated, give back to those students that are coming to BYU in the future.
Every day, I help an animal walk again. Four different vets told me that he would never be able to walk. Here's his leg. Oh my god, That's so yeah. cool. <laughs> she wants to move, and this device is allowing her to do so. I just knew he would walk. Every single step, it's doing exactly what I want. You can see the trust. You can see the connection in her brain forming. Best is yet to come. It is. It's only going to get sweeter. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Join us Friday for the Reviewables, the 2001 BYU football season. The nation's top offense, Brandon Dillman, Luke Staley, Gary Croton, and company, a loaded defense. Friday noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. We are live in Studio B. This is your day-to-day -day BYU sports play-by-play. -play. I'm Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside Jerem Jordan. Joining us now is the senior director of the college football, pro football network, Cam Miller a guy who has long been known for prognosticating awesomeness when it comes to Zach Wilson and others. Cam, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. I always like to be known as that, a prognosticator of, of awesomeness, essentially. <laughs> so thanks for having me. Uh, I'm, I'm always happy to be welcomed in uh, as such. So uh, thanks for having me. Zach first. That's what we should yes. uh, font you as. Yes. Yeah. Put that in your uh, social media handles for sure. <laughs> I'm going to go to LinkedIn right now, and I'll put that in there after we're done here. So. <laughs> Well, with that in mind, you also love Jaron Hall and have deemed him as a top six, top seven quarterback to be taken in the approaching NFL draft. That would have him late first round. So, Cam, why do you like Jaron Hall to go as early as late in the first round? Because we're seeing projections everywhere from the first round all the way back to like the fifth round. Yeah, there's only, I think, one deterring factor to not have him in the first round. It, it'll be his age. I mean, if, if Kenny Pickett's an older quarterback, going to be 24, just turned 24, uh, Jaron, what, 25, if, as he's transitioning to the NFL, I think that's the only deterring factor. But honestly, it it helps him in a day and age where we just skipped a bunch of quarterbacks in this last NFL draft, and there's a bunch of, you know, bridge quarterback is now a term. Jaron Hall comes in, and he starts from day one, in my opinion. There's a there's multiple intangibles that he has. Every level of the field, the NFL throws, outbreaking routes, 20 yards down the field, throwing receivers open, but it's the little subtle nuances in his game. It's the squaring of his shoulders. It's the arm angles he can throw up from under pressure, and it's navigation of the pocket. There's so many things that he does well that are so subtle, so small, that it takes, you know, multiple looks, multiple uh, rewatches of the plays and games that he's, he's had. So injury history and age deterrent, I guess. But honestly, there's nothing else in his game that he doesn't have that isn't near elite. And what's wild, and you use the E-word, uh, we don't use it in vain on this show, so nicely done. He had a tremendous season last year, a guy that has two years of eligibility, but if he has a great year, it sure feels like, and from what we've heard, that he would bounce and go to the NFL, especially in this situation, he should, right? Um, he's, he's a guy that has waited his turn and last year performed well, and then this year has an opportunity to increase that with more high-profile games. So is there is there a moment or a game that you feel like Jaron needs to seize to be a first round guy, to be a second round guy this year on this schedule? Uh, it's probably the beginning slate, those, those, uh, maybe not USF, but it's, it's hosting Baylor and it's hosting the familiarity of the former coaches and coaching staff members. Um, we'll get to Eric Mateos and how he left that the line, I'm sure, eventually here, but uh, getting to, to Baylor, but going to Eugene uh, week three, you got to go in there and I, Oregon may not be what they once were you know, a couple of years ago in terms of the secondary play, but there are still some members of that secondary that if he lights up that Oregon secondary um, and just Oregon in general in Eugene, I think that's the moment. That's the game to look at right there is whether or not we're going to see that Jaron Hall all season long. And if that's going to, you know, propel him, I think that's the game that could do it. Cam Miller is with us on BYU Sports Nation. We're discussing Jaron Hall. Uh, we've got the quarterback stuff out of the way, but Cam, we can't help but notice who's protecting Jaron Hall. Blake Freeland has seemed to just fly up draft boards. A lot of people like him in the first round. So who do you expect to go first, Blake Freeland or Jaron Hall? It's tough. I think Blake has the, the better chance. I think Jaron's got a really, it's an uphill battle with CJ Stroud, Bryce Young. I mean, if people are even looking at T Tyler Van Dyke from Miami as a first round kid, I don't believe it yet. We'll see. But there's so many good quarterbacks right now. And with so many teams that might be needy it, it, left tackle, I think is very open right now. There is no left tackle one. There's no Evan Neal. There's no Kim Iquano in this draft class right now. I think Blake Freeland could prove himself to be left tackle. If Donovan Smith's of the world are getting $60 million for the bucks, then it clearly shows how valuable left tackles are. 
but good ones at that. And I think Blake Freeland is a guy who's got size, feet, hands, and his ability to anchor and balance. Balance through contact at left tackle is incredibly difficult to do, and it's a transitional period, but it's one thing that I mentioned to him before. Speaking with Coach Mateos, he said Blake Freeland's one of the best he's ever had to do that as well. So that's what he loved about him and, and was sad to leave, if uh, I can quote him there properly. Yeah, Blake Freeland's ascension has been incredible. Quarterback in high school, super mobile. He's put on the weight. He's so quick. It's It's been fun to watch because we've seen multiple uh, outlets say, hey, first round potential top 10 guy. It's like, whoa, didn't realize the ceiling was that high, which is super exciting. But back to the quarterback thing. So Kenny Pickett, only guy taken right in the first round last year. Um, everybody's talked about how this is going to be a better quarterback draft. I don't know if that's just because it wasn't good last year that it's going to be better next year or what the needs of certain teams and timing. Do you feel like Jaron could benefit from, hey, say maybe four to seven guys go in the first round next year? That's where maybe he sneaks into the first? Yeah, I mean, he he could. It's it's very possible. It's very likely. I think his pro-ready his pro ready ability will be something that, pushes him up into that upper echelon. There's going to be guys that I think they're going to bank on traits. Tyler Van Dyke being one of them um, from Miami. I'll just use him as another example because there's traits, there's elite skills in his arm, but I, whether he has it mentally, Phil Jerkovic from Boston College as well, whether he has it mentally, he's got some some very good traits in his arm, but I think they're not pro ready and they won't have that ability to understand systems like Jaron could. So the age might help him there, uh, but that ability to, if he can showcase it again, the linear growth as a quarterback this season going into it, I think that that's what vaults him into it as well. Cam Miller, a senior director of college football and the Pro Football Network. Uh, we're talking about potentially BYU having an historic draft because not only are we discussing Jaron Hall and Blake Freeland, they both might go in the first round. We'll see, as you were just discussing. But Clark Barrington, Puka Nakua, Peyton Wilgar is the guy that you've been high on in the recent past, and now he's healthy and looking to take that next level jump into the NFL. Throw in Isaac Rex at tight end. So, Cam, how many guys are we talking about that you legitimately think BYU will have drafted in 2023? You have the you said the five there, and then the six as well. If you do throw in Isaac Rex, I, you know I'm not going to go out as far as say Mason Wake is one of those players as well. But I think if we saw you know, multiple of those fullback H back types that could transition to one of those pass catching roles out of the backfield or as an inline tight end wakes up there as well. So you have five, I think that's a very high possibility. Six is a bit of a reach. Um, Peyton, unfortunately, his injury history as well and his age will likely ding him a little bit there. I think he's got all around incredible skills, but definitely the next after the top two, it, it's Barrington. Um, and then for future pro prognosticating as well, I think Campbell as well, Campbell Barrington in the next two years for him as well. But Right now, this draft, you have Blake and you have Clark Barrington. I think both can prove to be, uh, I mean, interior offensive line aren't going to be day one, guys. It's going to be a stretch to get them in day two. But at this point, I mean, he's a lock for that day, you know, day three, round four, Barrington, if he keeps showing what he's been able to showcase. When you talked about uh, the offensive line and Eric Mateo, certainly we feel like it's loaded. We're very excited about this offensive line. Christopher Brooks coming in from Cal running behind it. We feel like, hey, it's got to be a thousand yard guy, at least behind this offensive line. What did you learn from your conversations with Eric Mateos, who's at Baylor, who's going to play BYU, about this O-line because uh, the Cougars really like what they've got this year? Yeah, it's uh, how he recruited, I guess. That's probably the best way to say it, and what he left them with the intangibles. Um, uh, isolating what works in the college game, but also what transitions them to the pro level, too, talking with him as well. And that's where the Blake Freeland came up. That's where a couple of his guys now down at Baylor have come up, too. But it's uh, it's balance is one of the bigger things that he stresses as well as, you know, the ability to road grade to uh, lack of a better term, get out there and really want to pancake guys that grit, the tenacity. And that's what this whole line is all about. In my opinion, they want to, you know, they want to snatch your head off. Basically they want to plant you in the ground. And I think that's what really stands out about all these guys too. They're not just these, you know, light on their feet, great footwork guys. They're strong, mean, and very tenacious at the point of attack. I think road grades, the best phrase to use there. I love that <laughs> phrase. That's an amazing phrase. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Chris, Chris Brooks, I, there's a reason he came, right? Uh, yes. You got to look at those five and be like, hey, I really want to run behind those guys. I can do a lot on my own, but I'm going to have huge holes to run through this season. We've been looking at correlations between BYU winning a lot of games, finishing ranked, and what that means for players in the draft. How much does a team winning in college correlate to players having their draft stock increased, if you will? it's it's tough to to look at it and say it doesn't help i mean you look at what the national championship there was 16 of them or in the playoffs at least that were first rounders from those four teams alone they won the most games last year georgia with a historic draft they won the, the whole thing i mean it's 
it's hard to say that it doesn't actively do good things for you. You get more notoriety. You, you start to look at as a scout, what's making this team good. And you look at the sum of their whole parts as well. And I think that's what ultimately it boils down to. You got to win some of those on the, on the national stage, you know, beating Utah state this year is not going to really quite do it, but beating Oregon, beating Baylor, or even holding your own. I mean, Jared's best game last year, in my opinion, was that second half of the Baylor game. The dude lit it up. And so there's moment there's there's victories within losses and defeats, unfortunately, because I don't know if we really think we're, we go 12 and 0 as BYU right now. It's possible if Jaron is who we think he is and he gets a little bit of help. But I'm not going to go on record and say that. But no, it, it does. Obviously, it helps. Um, it's because you look at it at that. You look at, you know, what's making this team tick, what's making this team good. Ultimately, Zach is what made it good. What, two years ago now at this point, it feels like we're, uh, we're already two years past that year. That's pretty crazy. But uh, I, I digress. Uh, it's that's what you look at and you say, Hey, what's making them take what's making it good. And it's, it, it helps. There's no way around it. I'm seeing 12 and all through the blue goggles. I don't know what you're talking about game. I, I, I just, I just, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I see it now. Yeah. Okay. Let's take them off. Uh, Oh, 10 and two still good. Um, will that change that being BYU has to have this really nice season to really get a, a sort of Dax Milne on the radar. Obviously he, he rides the Zach wave with that too. But um, it, do you think in the Big 12 that will adjust for BYU a little bit where they are more visible? They don't have to have this unbelievable year for some of the other guys to get noticed. Yes, because, yeah, you, you look at a team like Texas Tech. They're not noticed on a national stage. I think BYU has a bigger platform nationally than Texas Tech does. But Texas Tech's got that baked in nature where you're scouting Texas players. You're scouting Baylor players, Oklahoma players, obviously, to use both Texas and Oklahoma. Now gone, of course, but or will be gone bad example but you know the, the baked in nature you're going to scout those other big name programs or you're just in big 12 country you just do the whole big 12 loop it's going to help them vastly because you could you know lose a couple of conference games but you're still getting eyes more eyes than you would you know just playing out west or playing on a you know non-big market stage and i, I it, it'll definitely help them there you don't need this meteoric rise from uh you know national to national prominence it'll just you'll sort of be there you'll always be there in the back of the minds of everybody all right, Cam, let's have you go on record because you are the director of college football for the Pro Football Network and uh, you're all things football. Let's start with this first one. How many games do you expect BYU to win in the 2022 regular season? You're putting me in a really tough spot here. Let me, uh, let's, can we, let's go through the schedule together. And let me let's just go through say the schedule, USF, yeah. is win. USF is a win. Um, I'm, I really like, I think Jerry Bohannon will give them a, a a good uptick at quarterback play. I like Stephen McLean. Uh, I, USF is still a few years away. Even Jeff Scott probably knows it as well. Uh, that Baylor game, I think coming to Provo hurts, um, and they got to figure out their quarterback. So I can see that, that as a win as well. I think Bay, Baylor's not quite there, and they need a little bit, you know, some of some of their whole parts um, after losing Bohan and, um, and figuring out that issue. I think for two and zero, I'm gonna we go on I like it. As well and, you know, I do have the BYU flag uh, <laughs> in, in the garage. I, I can't not, I can't not wrap them at this point. Beautiful. Let's face it. So, don't tell you fans that who you know. <laughs> I, I posted a Cam Rising video, and they were all up in arms. You know, they they were so confused and so torn. So, <laughs> and good. We'll get to that. I, I wish uh, the Holy War was happening this year. I'm not gonna lie. Um, Oregon is a win. Too much to figure out, too much to overcome, and uh, no Nicks, as I call him, Bo Nicks is not the answer. <laughs> Three and oh, going into Wyoming. You're looking at you're looking at five and oh, wow. going to Vegas, going into Notre and Dame, baby. So uh, unfortunately, it's five and one after that. Okay. That's fine. Uh, we'll take it. Arkansas, that's probably your bigger wild card there at the end yeah. of the season. If you're looking at eleven wins or tw- or ten because of Arkansas. So. Mm. Not a big fan of KJ Jefferson myself. I think he's a Cam Newton light, but even less accurate as a quarterback passing. So give me a hard fought loss, though, unfortunately. Sam Pittman and that offensive line is too much to, to overcome, um, even at home. Uh, so Liberty, ECU, Boise, Utah Tech, Stanford, something's got to change with the Cardinal. So I absolutely can see 10 and 2. All right, ten and two, Cam yeah, Miller. Cam, you're a guy, dude. You're a guy, man. <laughs> hey, I, and I'm, I'm not just doing it to, to, to you know, Given to the masses here, I, it, this is a this is a serious roster built uh, yeah. to succeed. Yeah. In season, in season. Does that translate into five draft picks for BYU? That's my second question. Absolutely, absolutely, maybe even more. But uh, I, I love Mason and Airwake, but I, he's not my sixth guy. It would definitely be, it'd be Isaac Rex. I well, in there. I dare say, no national guy knows the BYU Cougars better than you. 
Seriously. You bring it every time, man. You know, you know Mason I try, I, I try to give him <laughs> Okay, I do. Joe, Joe Wheat helped me out there, so I got to give credit to my <laughs> co hype Joe Wheat, nice. My hype train co conductor, but yeah, it's. Um, <laughs> It, I, I try to get the same level of detail to all 131 now at this point. There's but it no is, way you love TV. them as much as BYU, though. Come on, man. No. Come on. Man. No. JMU will, will slowly <laughs> encroach us because I'm my entire white side of family oh. from JMU. So I, I will show some love to my James dogs, Madison. But, is that what you're saying? Uh, James nice. Madison. Yeah, my whole my wife's whole family went to JMU. So now that Very they're nice. coming on board, yep. so it'll be fun. But no, I'm sorry. I, I do love my coots. <laughs> Cam Meller, we appreciate the time as always bringing it on BYU Sports Nation. We'll talk to you again soon. My pleasure, guys. Thanks as always. I'm dead serious. He knows BYU better than any national person. <laughs> oh, great. Once He's, once he scored he can, once he, he once he scored the big win with Zach Wilson, it was all in, baby. Oh, that was a huge win. It, it, it was he and Andre Ware. Andre Ware declared his freshman year. He goes, This guy has first round potential. Jake Keep said it as well. It was like, but I remember Cam first, I guess. Cam said it after Zach. He said after the season. Went, uh, had nine t- or 11 touchdown passes and seven interceptions. Or and he said like only three of them were his fault yes, or something. Yes. And we were like, what? Huh? He knew. He knew. He knew. Let's go. Okay. Coming up. Women's volleyball star Heather Knighting joins us in studio on the upcoming season and USA Collegiate National Team. And in the spirit of Top Gun Maverick, which BYU athlete would you choose as your wingman? Mm. This is BYU Sports Nation. Dude, go see Top Gun Maverick now. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-size truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowell Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. Gather the family for a midweek pick-me-up with an all-new lineup Wednesdays on BYU TV. Is that cool? Is that okay? You want inspiring? Yeah, we got that. Fun? Definitely. And surprising? Well, you'll just have to find out. Enjoy a marathon of good works to lift and inspire you for the rest of your week. See it all Wednesdays on BYU TV or anytime on the free app. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok for content throughout the day, on the weekends, on the whenever you want, man. He is Jerem Jordan. I am Spencer Linton. And it's now time to whip it. The Cougar Whip Round presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company enabling global trade for a growing world. The Jets and Falcons play a preseason Monday night football game on August 22nd. Which fan base will have the greater viewership, Falcons, Jets, or Cougars? (laughs) I'm going to go with the New York Jets. New York media beats all. Yeah, Yeah, even though it's one of two teams, it will still be, yes, Jets. But there will be a lot of Cougar fans watching that one. For sure, but (laughs) it'll be the New York media. I bet Tyler's going to get a lot of run, pun intended, in that one because uh, he's trying, you know, trying to prove himself on the team. He and Cordero Patterson are the guys for the Falcons, it would seem. BYU junior quarterback Jaron Hall hoping to have an NFL future. He's working out with John Beck this summer in California, but he's flying there to and from, not driving like Zach Wilson did. What does this say about Jaron Hall? NIL exists. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, during a pandemic, certainly 
you can have a, a different situation there. And listen, sometimes a road trip's fun. You know, driving 10 hours by yourself. Uh, some people don't like that. Others do, like Zach did. But yeah, he's just trying to get in and out and uh, play some golf in between. Us. Yes, it's situational awareness by Jaron Hall Obedience. because they're not in a pandemic. Obedience. And efficiency by Jaron Hall. It's not works. You know. I mean, Zach Wilson didn't have any other options. He couldn't go anywhere and really do anything else. He could have flown if he wanted. Well, no, I was saying like, got some fly, dough. Why? Fly down there and do what? You can't do anything in California at that he, point. He hangs out with the Rexes. This, this is what he did. At least he spends time driving and, you know, culturing himself with music. I don't know. He watched The Last Dance, too, on the way. <laughs> Listen, I guess. BYU there football you TikTok asked players who their top gun, uh, top gun wingman would be. So which BYU athlete would you have as your wingman? This is really tough for me, but I'm going to go with Puka Nakua. I just like, I just think Puka, he embodies big personality. Yes. And like, Would he pay attention enough, though, to push all the buttons? Well, he didn't have to. Like, <laughs> I, I'm doing the pilot stuff. He's back there just, uh, you know. Dorking around. Yeah, man. He's, <laughs> he's the goose. I he has to do something. He's the goose. But, yeah. but when called upon, he knows what to do, you know? I, I, big, big personality like Puka Nakua. We just mentioned him, but Jaron Hall is like the perfect wingman because he can be fun. Really? But super serious and focused when he needs See, to I be. See, I feel like he's and ice if man. And if I'm inept, then he's going to carry it. Because let's be <laughs> honest, he's like better at his job than I am. Like. Who's Maverick within BYU Athletics right now? It would be Max Hall if Max Hall was still here. Yes. Like, he would be Maverick. Like, yes. What what he did in the alumni game was set a certain tone that changed the entire game. I saw some of the older guys in there like, I want to go in. You ain't going in. Yeah. It's a little too competitive yeah. right now. The other, the other guy for me would be Ty Detmer. Okay. For the That'd Southern Southern draw on because he knows so many things, so many details. He's just wearing a cowboy hat. <laughs> How about this? NFL All-Pro linebacker and BYU great Fred Warner will be the official pace car driver wow. for the NASCAR Sonoma 350. Question is, will Fred keep the speed under 55? He's supposed to go, what, 45, we heard, or something? Um, Fred seems like he's going to obey the rules there, but who knows? As you said this morning, maybe he goes his jersey number with 54. Yeah, he wears, he wears 54. He, he's not going to eclipse 54. This, can the pace car driver get a penalty, too? <laughs> he gets a 15-yarder. <laughs> They're like, all right. Is the following Taco Bell establishment, which looks like a fancy bank with multiple drive throughs in Minnesota, the, the most unnecessary thing ever or the coolest thing you've ever seen? <laughs> this is like a building in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. It looks unbelievable. I'd like to uh, withdraw $200 from my savings account. Also, I'd like a chalupa and uh, a beef gordita supreme. Thanks. Look, look at that. Uh, um, you know, you can order uh, online and you show up and it just automates it, comes down. What would be funny is if they're launching burritos and tacos in a tube like a credit union. Just comes out like in a complete mess. Can I get my change uh, with a couple of fives and uh, the rest in $1 bills? Uh, I only got four mild plus packets. I need like eight. <laughs> what, what happens it's now? It's a bank. That's it's a thing. Taco Bell bank. I'd put my money in that. Probably give me more than Bitcoin. Coming up, today's rise and shout out to future champs. Now I'm hungry. Plus, BYU women's volleyball star Heather Knighting yeah. getting ready to rep the USA. But she's repping the white with us in Studio B first. This is BYU Sports Nation. Let's go. Professor Rock here. The Food Nanny. Chandler Scott here. Sam Ree. Hey, everyone. Hello. I just want to tell you about this amazing, excellent, cool account called My Style. My Style Checking. I'm talking travel points, gift cards, concert tickets. All just for using my account. That's My Style. So check it out. Give it a shot. Open your My Style Checking account today.
are things happening in Seaburg. They care more about people spending money than they do about people getting sick. If they're causing toxic pollution, it is everyone's fight. We can't just let them get away with it. If anyone can figure this out, it's my brother. Friends don't abandon each other. Fine. Be heroes. I know what it's like to love someone so much you'd do anything for them. Whatever happens, I'm glad we're facing it together. Me too. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Hit up that uh, BYU TV Sports YouTube channel. Subscribe today for some of the best highlights, interviews, and archive content. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live in Studio B. Joining us now, our second guest of the day. She's about to rep Team USA on the volleyball mm -hmm. circuit. Thanks but for your service. She's been repping the Y for a long time and at a high level. Heather Knighting of BYU Women's Volleyball right. joins us in Studio B. Heather, welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. It's I'm been a minute. During yeah, the season? It's been a while. Yeah. Which season last year, right? <laughs> it felt like there were, there were two, right? In, there were, there the were two. Year. Okay, first things first. We'll get to the Team USA stuff in just a moment, but the women's volleyball schedule was recently released. Mm -hmm. It yeah. feels loaded yeah. with big-name opponents. What do you think of the overall schedule with the likes of Pitt at home, at Georgia Tech on the schedule, among others? Yeah, yeah. we are super excited just to play these really good teams that did super well last season and – Going into this season, we'll just get some more competition and playing Pitt at home. We played them last year preseason, and we get to play them here too. And they're a super good team. And also some others we haven't seen before, at least I haven't seen while being here at BYU. And I think it'll get us really ready for the, the conference season. It's got to be awesome. Like, uh, you know, huge, huge names on this schedule. Uh, you know, Ohio State and Utah and Georgia Tech. and Duke. Okay, let's talk about Pitt. This was the only regular season loss. This was where the season ended. You would have met them in the Elite Eight, right? That's a, that's a big game. To have them at home, it's going to be pretty cool. It almost reminds me of 2018 Stanford, where it's like you're bringing in this super legit team. Mm -hmm. The Smithfield House is going to be rocking. Yeah. That's going to be a fun one. Yeah. I'm super excited to play them. It was so fun at their house, and I think them coming here will show them some more competition and see what they're made of, see what we're made of, and yeah. How will this team? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jim. Heather's hanging out with the uh, pit head coach right now. By the way, they're yeah, she coaching is. together. On oh, that same she's team. getting the inside track. <laughs> okay. How will this team be different than the BYU team last year? Different and perhaps better. Yeah. So we had a lot of different seniors leave us last year, and this spring we had to work through a lot, see what our roles were, and see who was going to play, who was going to work hard. And I think we had a really good off season starting January and we're all in and we're all working hard and I'm super excited just to see what we're made of and see um, who's going to stand out this year. Where do you feel like you improve the most? Yeah, I think we are just more united. We're super positive and I think just our mental strength has grown a lot and just we have a growth mindset that's wanting to win and wanting to work hard together. Anything is possible with you and Whitney Bauer and Aaron Anderson. <laughs> I like it's exciting to see as we just saw Whitney go on two and just crush it, right? Yeah. Um, it, what what's it like in this situation knowing? Okay, last year was a really special group, mm -hmm. and okay, you got to move on. And yeah. You got emotionally. It sounds like you already have where it's like, all right, this is our new group. We got to figure it out. Yeah. Kenzie Kerber was incredible. Mm -hmm. Kenzie Eschenberg is an all timer, right? How do you, how do you move on from that and figure out? Okay, okay, you're you're the person in this space, but you don't have to be that person. You be you. Right. Yeah, and I think that's what we kind of had to figure out, that we don't have to fill what their roles were, but we were recruited, we were brought here for our specific strengths and what we have, and so letting that come out and seeing how it works together um, is really cool and really special, and I think we'll really find that out in our preseason and into conference. And do you take confidence from the fact that, I mean, you look at the last decade of BYU women's volleyball, it's like, you guys go to the Sweet 16, yeah. Nine out of eight out of the last nine years. Like, kind of the status quo. You guys quote. reload. Like, you right. figure it out, right? Yeah. I think, yeah, our coaches do a really good job of that, of setting the standard, and we have our values and our culture of what we want, and I think we are we all buy into it, which is pretty special. You are now essentially two years off of your mission. How long did it take you to get back in the full swing of things, no pun intended, full health, and, and where you were feeling like, okay, I'm I'm back to where I was with volleyball? Yeah, so I came back and I kind of just started right back into volleyball and it was definitely weird, but 
being here before and coming back, it felt really familiar. I had the same coaches, same setter, and um, most of my same teammates. And I think they just put a lot of trust and faith in me that I could fulfill my role and just do my best. And I think that brought me confidence to do my best. I hear some players talk about you know, the mission, like making me too nice. Almost so like, like you're, you're almost, a really nice like, person, like yeah. lose the like, edge. Like is the edge back now, Heather? Yes, it took, it took a little <laughs> bit, but I think once we started playing games, uh, the, that competitiveness came back and I thought it wouldn't, but it did. I just have it in me. So did I you compete happy. on your mission in a certain way? Like, like, could you satisfy that sort of itch in a different way? Or was it like uh, quelled for like the 18 months? I don't know. Maybe there were some like P-Day activities. We'd play sports, but that's about it. Me and my companion just would have fun. And You're like me versus scripture stuff. I'm going <laughs> to dominate this. It's going to be. A- OK, so remind us, did you come back? You came back the summer uh, before the season last year, right? Yes. Is that right? And and you'd have a ton of time to get back into it. And in fact, at times, Heather was not letting you go to serve receive, right? Where it was right. like physically, you need to to take it easy to get back. But you were like, I want to go. I want to go. Yeah. That, what was that process like of you're still playing in the matches. You guys have this unbelievable year where you win like a million, 30 games or whatever. You only lose one in the regular season. But you're like itching to, to play, but your butt, Heather's trying to hold you back so you don't get hurt, right? Right. Yeah. So I would, we had double days, but I'd probably just do one of the practices every day. And the first few games, I'd only play a few sets and then she pulled me out. But um, I was grateful for it at the same time, just to kind of get back into it and um, just take it one step at a time. And she helped me with that. And it was weird too, because the team had played in the spring due to COVID. Right. And so yeah. she's managing, it was just a weird deal, but Hey, Talon's back and Kennedy's back, which you would not have been able to play with them right. without uh, the COVID extra year. So it was yeah. really, it was a special year in that regard, too. Yeah. Have you ever been angry in your life? <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably on the court a few times. <laughs> but yes, yeah, it happens. Playing sure. Utah, San Diego. Yes, definitely yeah. those teams. Yes, yes. Um, okay, t- <laughs> tell us about uh, playing with the United States yeah. uh, Women's Collegiate National Team. With Aaron Livingston. This will be fun training uh, coming up here in a couple weeks. Yeah, me and Aaron are going on the 19th to go train in Anaheim with USA and different girls in college. And it'll be just a super cool experience. I'm glad she's coming with me. And just to learn from um, the best of the best and other good good college girls out there yeah. and um, just gain those relationships too, I think will be really cool. Yeah, you're you're not new to this. So, I mean... <laughs> you played uh, on this team before? Yeah. Four, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you've In, done this before. You went to was it Japan? Japan. Yeah, yeah. There's mm-hmm. one Kenzie Kerber on that trip. Yeah. Well, well listen, yeah. show Aaron the ropes, okay? <laughs> like Aaron, this is where oh, we Aaron's take got care of. Aaron's yeah, got it exactly. Congratulations on everything. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What a run. We're uh, to say the least. We're very excited about what's going to happen with BYU women's volleyball. Two, yeah, two months and a week or two, and then we're going. Let's yeah, go. we're super Let's excited. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Heather. Thank you. Okay, coming up, who shall earn the elite voice of the day? And uh, we're handing out some karma inside of today's rise and shout out. Oh, oh yeah. It's like it's like a full double dose, dip. Full dose. Double like, rainbow. This what is BYU, this mean? This is BYU Sports Nation. Like four Advil worth. Let's go. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV, to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Turn TV time into together time with the BYU TV app. Watch all your favorite shows when, where, and how you want. This isn't like a practical joke, is it? No, sir. Immerse yourself in stories with all the feels. Go on uninterrupted journeys of discovery. 
and see families coming together while watching with your own. See new and original content, all for free, on the BYU TV app. Every day, I help an animal walk again. Four different vets told me that he would never be able to walk. Here's his leg. Oh my god, so yeah. cool. Go, <laughs> she wants to move, and this device is allowing her to do so. I just knew he would walk. Every single step, it's doing exactly what I want. You can see the trust. You can see the connection in her brain forming. Best is yet to come. It is. It's only going to get sweeter. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is on demand. You can download the BYU TV and BYU radio apps today or download the podcast on your favorite podcast platform. And please subscribe, rate, and review. Our question of the day, which is more likely, BYU football to have five or more NFL draft picks in 2023 or for BYU football to win 10 games in the 2022 season preceding the NFL draft? I like both of those. Those sound amazing. Yeah, can we can we just have both? Because like, BYU had both in 2020. That's like surf and turf. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. At Blaine S or at Blaine Swallow on Instagram says, I think it is to have five draft picks. This team is mm. stacked with talent. Nothing will change that. The schedule is tough, and injuries could always occur. That would prevent a 10 win season. It's a good point on controllability. I injuries think, prevented yes. an 11 win season last year. <laughs> yeah, don't remind me. Our elite voice of the day. Let's make Jerem happy now. Presented by Sundance Mountain Resort from Amy Jones on Twitter. What's up? She says they're symbolic. If BYU gets 10-plus wins, sorry, symbiotic, thank you. If BYU gets 10-plus wins, we'll have 5-plus draft picks. Fewer wins would mean fewer draft picks. Both basically are a sure thing in my book. Yeah, they're somewhat tied, but I think BYU's been on the radar a little too much to not have at least three Next year, oh. even if, even if BYU goes like eight and five, let's say it's unfortunately not what we want. It still could go three plus draft picks, maybe even five. Just depends, right? Like Zach Wilson to be number yeah. two, BYU had to be almost undefeated. See, I feel like it's at, at worst three draft picks. At worst. At worst, yes. No, it's three plus, period. Today's rise and shout outs presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Let's go to track and field. They're off to nationals. Nationals, nationals start. They're already there. Uh, so good luck through the weekend. Bring home some natties, some top fives. Bunch Let's of go. entries. 12 for the men, 9 for the Let's women. Let's go. Come on. Our thanks to today's guest, Cam Miller of the Pro Football Network and Heather Knighting of BYU Women's Volleyball. Sorry to one Dennis Pitta. We ran out of time. Conversation continues 24-7. Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hashtag BYUSN. For Jeremiah Spencer, shout out to Sierra Parker. BYU Sports Nation back to work tomorrow. Go Cougs.